son of a preacher man, Steve Burgess, not only talks witty, he writes witty. In fact, he has won silver medals for his travel and humor writing. A few years ago, he wrote some magazine articles about his family with their permission. The response was so great, he knew he had to write a little more. The result is a memoir, a tribute to his late mother, Joan Burgess. He calls it, Who Killed Mom? A delinquent son's meditation on family mortality and very tacky candles. It is my pleasure to welcome Steve Burgess to Studio 4 to tell us more. Pleasure to be here. Nice to meet you. Uh, yes. Again. And, and uh, yeah, it's been a while. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we've swapped shows from time to time, mm -hmm. I think, you know? Yes, in a certain kind of bent humor. <laughs> yes. I'll blame that on you. Okay. You know, one of the gifts of writing is that you learn things, and, when, and uh, certainly you're in, you learn things about yourself, I bet. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's very true, yeah. Um, it's not necessarily always your intention when you, you know, you might be setting out to you know, learn mm -hmm. things about other people, but you tend to accidentally learn things about yourself, yeah. Take me back to your youth. Ah. Uh, little Steve. Yes. <laughs> little Steve. How far, like what youth, are we talking youth youth? Like uh -huh, let's adorable see. little... Adorable little Steve. Last in uh, right. five sibs? Yes, five siblings and I'm the fifth. Yeah. Yes. You, ha you have to go back a ways to get the, to the adorable part, but the adorable part is there. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, I I'll t tell you this, I'm very glad to see there's the uh, Geico ad that's out now that has the chicken hawk in it. It has Foghorn Leghorn and the, and the little chicken hawk, because mm -hmm. that was my nickname when I was a kid. The uh, other, my brothers and sisters called me chicken hawk because I had little pudgy little cheeks. <laughs> and uh, I was a cute little chicken hawk, so that's mm -hmm. what they used to call me. So I was cute at okay. that when I was about, you know, yay high, I was, I was cute. And then, you know, I got into about grade seven, grade eight, and the cuteness was just like out the door. And then I was just a holy terror. I read that, and not only that, you carried on into your teens and uh, mm -hmm. became worse. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many times were you arrested? Uh, there's water in this, by the way. Can I just say that this, <laughs> this is water. Mm -hmm. um, how many times arrested? Uh, let's see, um, a number, a number. Uh, I got arrested for shoplifting. I got arrested twice for marijuana. Got arrested for open liquor. The big bust, which is detailed. Uh, oh, I, uh, the I got break arrested for break and enter. That was Great. that was terrible. Um, and then 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 the big trial, which is described in the book, was where I was charged with obstructing justice and attacking a police officer, which was actually a bit of a frame up. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. See, that's what a lot of people said you at see, the time too. Uh, the lovely, the lovely mother Joan yeah. is in the heaven. Yes. So we can't ask her. You know, this is it. I mean, one one of the things. Um, this is actually a, a good lead up to the story. One of the, the the most humbling things in my youth was the fact that my mom did believe me. You know, the the, the last story. There, there is a, a chapter in the book about where I actually get put on trial. <laughs> you know, and it's a serious mm -hmm. business. But it just so happens that in this case, I'm basically not guilty. That I'm, I'm the victim of some trumped up charges by police officers. And I just told you the history of my earlier charges. And so mm -hmm. you're right. But my mom's friends had the same reaction you just had was like, yeah, right, you're innocent. Mm -hmm. But my mom believed me, and she was right because she knew that I wasn't a good liar, I think. But she actually, it wasn't just blind faith in her case, she knew that I wasn't lying. And that's the, that was the humbling thing. I thought after all the trouble that I got into, and after all the pain that I caused her, she still believed in me. And it was just, mm. that was, and, and not just blind faith, but that she looked at me and said, no, he's, you know, he's telling the truth here. Well, you were the youngest. I don't know what <laughs> happens after they go through four. Somehow the youngest gets off with uh, a lot of mischief. Well, they hire a lawyer for you. That's, you know. <laughs> I, they never hired lawyers for any of the other kids. Mm -hmm. so. No, no, no. Yeah. And now tell me about the other kids. Uh, uh, Leslie, Lynn, Jock, and Joe. Right. Lynn works for the CBC? Yeah, that's right. She's a CBC producer. Is she the one who said, um, I will never be poolless again? <laughs> and that's because you had a neighbor who had a nice swimming pool, and apparently uh, your digs, being the son of a pastor, yes. 
weren't all that spiffy. We were, what we were is because we lived in the church house, we lived in a, on a rich street. We were a, basically a lower middle class, not quite poor, but almost poor family living on a rich street. Mm. Lots because, of puffed wheat? Uh, oh, so much puffed wheat. <laughs> Puff, Salisbury steak. Or steakettes, you know, the little steakettes you would mm -hmm. buy in boxes. I used to think hamburger was a big luxury because all we ever got was the steakette patties when we had yeah. in a hamburger bun. Said, Why can't we have real hamburgers? You know, I thought hamburger was a big, big deal. Well, on a good Friday, you get minute steaks. <laughs> yes. You have minute yeah, steaks yeah. at your house. Oh, yes, yeah. so, did, so did we, but lots of puffed <laughs> wheat. Uh, so uh, back to uh, your parents when they met. Yes. Uh, Queen's, was it Queen's University? Queen's University, yes it was. My dad was a stunningly good-looking football player. A uh, startlingly good-looking guy. Didn't realize it and was very uh, unsophisticated. But they were a beautiful couple. Mm. They really were a beautiful couple. Love at first sight? Uh, for my dad, absolutely. Um, a football rolled off into a sideline and uh, my mom was in the Highland Dancers. He was a lineman, mm -hmm. and he asked a friend, who's that? Does anybody know that redhead? And a friend said, yeah, I've got a date with her uh, coming up this weekend. And it w wasn't that big a deal to the other guy, so mm -hmm. he said, I tell you what, I'll get my old girlfriend to be your date, and then halfway through the date, we can switch. And so that's what happened. And uh, then they were off to the races. It, it did seem like, if not love at first sight, then pretty quick. It, mm -hmm. was, a, it was initially a pretty um, hot and heavy romance, and then it went off the rails for a number of years. Uh, they broke up. Yeah, yeah but back to uh, when they met, because you suggest in the book that your father was as good-natured as a cartoon rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your mom was a little more circumspect. Yeah, she's a much, they, they were very, always were very, very mm -hmm. different. She was a woman who hated to be the center of attention and did not want to be embarrassed. And my dad couldn't help embarrassing people. Just, I mean, because he's the kind of guy who's just like a big goofy bear. You know, he's going to talk to everybody in the grocery lineup at the grocery store. Yes. He's going to drink his soup from a bowl because who could possibly mind that? Nobody's going to take offense if I pick up my soup bowl and drink from it. My mom would want to be sinking into the earth. I'm sure, but he must have been a marvelous minister because some of those ministers aren't all that entertaining in the church. Yeah. He was United. He was he was Knox very, United? Yeah, Knox United Church okay. in Brandon, yeah. He was a very good, a very good minister. The Brandon, uh, the Brandon, Brandon, Manitoba. Brandon, Manitoba, the hometown, yeah. Okay, so. and, and uh, Dad uh, floated high above the domestic grind, you suggest, yeah, too. He you didn't know, help a lot. This was, I mean, this is, uh, you know, one thing I say about the book is that my mom's uh, journey was very much the journey of that era, where she, uh, my parents met at university, and my mother was an extremely intelligent woman, mm. But then all of a sudden, bingo, it's five kids in six years. Five kids in six years. Under 13, Yeah. right? Yeah, and then, and then, and then there's, uh, you know, she's the minister's wife, and so she's got to be purer than pure, and she's living in small towns in, you know, in Saskatchewan right. often. Um, and it was just hellish for her, and she had to find a way to get mm -hmm. back to realize the potential that she always had, you know? Sure, and, and of course, then she had you, yeah. the delinquent son. Were the exactly. others as bad? No, they ha caused different types of trouble, mm -hmm. but uh, they were warm-up acts mostly just for me. I came <laughs> along and was hitting cleanup, you know. Mm -hmm. I, although my sister Lynn uh, was trouble in a different way, not law-breaking trouble. She was just hell on wheels. She was just really difficult to deal with because she was extremely willful and headstrong. Right. I, th I figured that out by reading about her because I yes. could see her uh, saying to your mother when she was giving, getting a home haircut, not my style. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if she couldn't live without a swimming pool, she was not going to have home haircuts. And, <laughs> and in those days, that's, that what, that's what it was all about. Yeah. You also did a couple near deaths as a kid, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You fell out of the car. Yep, I fell out of the car on a busy highway. Skidded down, my life was saved by a Dairy Queen treat. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't have seat belts. No, no, or we bounced I, around. Or like, I didn't. I don't know about you. We bounced around like golf balls in a dryer back there. And, and you know, we'd gone to the Dairy Queen. I had one of those push-ups, you know, a little cardboard tube. You yeah, push sure. up the ice cream. A jet. A jet. That's what we called it. Exactly, a jet. And then I was wedged at the end of the line of kids, and we turned a corner off the highway, and the door flew open. I went flying off down the middle of the highway, but my Dairy Queen jet rolled into the gravel. Now, I never saw this, but my brothers and sisters say that there was a car racing towards me at high speed. But... I, as soon as I stopped skidding, I jumped up and just made a run for it, not to get away from the car, but to get my right. Dairy Queen jet. And so the car went behind me. Anything yeah. for ice cream. Exactly. But when you wonder why uh, mothers uh, 
get gray a little earlier than some fathers, perhaps. My mother's hair went white, perhaps. white as snow. Yeah. Your proof. Yes. But she was sidelined a bit, but then she found her way. And when we come back, we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about your near-death incident on the bike with the rebar. Mm. I love that story. Uh, Steve Burgess, our guest, Who Killed Mom, his book.